There are a few concerns raised by Jamaicans in the diaspora who have contemplated returning to Jamaica, and these are predominantly surrounded with two areas, safety and safety generally, and then the other area is medical care. And this medical care includes emergency care as well as general care. And what we want to look at on this video is how do the Jamaican diaspora actually realize what they want in order to be able to feel that they are capable of returning to Jamaica and living the life that they desire for themselves. Jam from family, the jam from family, yeah. Jam from, come hang with me. Hello, 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 Wagwan. Big up yourself, whether you're there yard or you're there abroad. Welcome back to another episode of Life with the Jam Fams. Now, in this video, we're going to be focusing on just a brief look at how the Jamaican diaspora can impact change um, for the things that they actually want to see happening in Jamaica. Now, this is not to say that the Jamaican diaspora aren't doing things and making impact in Jamaica, because firstly, just looking at remittance that the diaspora sends to Jamaica is a significant part of the Jamaican um, GDP already. So they're already doing significantly and they are still contributing to different things that are happening in the country and supporting things in that way. However, what I want to look at is how can this be specifically directed at the areas of concern that they have that are preventing them from returning to the country. My sister um, and I are two very different human beings. We have so many differences. Um, however, we appreciate and value each other's uniqueness and our differences and know that um, they, it becomes authentically part of who we are and therefore we can um, give it the value and appreciation that it deserves. And I am particularly proud of her for her accomplishments and even more so for the way in which she has elevated um, herself over the last seven years and the work that she's doing to enhance the lives of other people who are um, in positions of um, disadvantage um, or um, in one way or another and how she's making sure that she's working with lone parents um, back to school drives and charities of that form and also parents with children with disabilities and she does frequent Jamaica at least once a year to do different um, charita charitable works, whether she's working in conjunction with, a, with an existing charity or she's coming to do something on from her charity, which is Kalel's Talapes Foundation. And so she does work here and in other parts of the world. And it is profound to see the impact that she's having um, on the scale that she's having it. Because when you look at it, um, you might think that, okay, what she's doing um, she she's coming and she's impacting this activity and that activity but when you look at it on a bigger picture you can see the level of impact it is having and the influence it then have on the lives of those people that it impacts and so it begs me to wonder how much more a group of diasporans deciding that they want to impact the safety and the medical care of um, that is currently on offer in Jamaica how much it and how far it could go to realize that ambition that they are then able to feel that the medical provision that is offered in Jamaica is suitable enough and reasonable enough for them to be able to come back and live here and feel that their medical care and needs would be well taken care of and the safety of the society and the environment that in which they're going to be would also be um, optimized for them and so it, I wanted to share some of the things that we, we sat down because I was sharing some of um, those comments that I get um, on the channel with her and um, trying to get some um, her perspective on the matter. And in so doing, I also wanted to find out from her, you know, some of her process and the things that she's doing. So I decided that I was going to um, interview her and see um, what some of her insights are and how she is in her own way having an impact on the lives of many in Jamaica whether it's back to school drive whether it's um, helping them with scholarships and tuition um, whether it's working with a lone parent or a parent or um, or parents with children with disability or any of the other categories in which she supports um, through her charity and so um, here is the interview for you 
and although you come to Jamaica and you're coming this time for a, and it's designated a family holiday yeah. um, oftentimes when you come you don't come without including some level of work so did you want to just tell us a little bit about the work that you do sometimes when you come to Jamaica oh I usually do um, interventions with families who have children with disability or we do a scholarship program for children who are living under the breadline through Kalos Talpies Foundation Okay, well. <laughs> I'm getting them on the action. Yeah. Are you doing the braids? Yes. We will. I had mine like two weeks ago. Is it? Yes. I top you. We've been partnering with a lot of other charities in Jamaica um, to be able to work on the grounds, even though we are not here, we still have points of contact here. Mm -hmm. One of them is um, in Grand Spend that we're gonna be doing our work with this summer for our annual seventh annual back to school treat in Grand Spen in Kingston with Makeda. She's lovely. Any donation you have, you can hand it over to her and um, message us for contact details. Um, and her charity is called Greater Need, Greater Shall We Do. Yeah, Greater Shall We Do, it is called. Um, so we're looking forward to that and all the kids are going to be volunteering in whatever capacity that they have their own core strength in and whatever gifts that they have that they can utilize to give back to the world. Yeah, because we have to teach them that yeah. they, they need to have this compassion to give back to people. Yeah. Because although they might be in positions of so uh, privileged in quotes, um, they still need to learn that not everybody might be in the same position as them. Yeah. And and it helps to get them to be a little bit, have more gratitude and grounded. for the things. Yes, and definitely. Um, they, it also helps with their self-awareness and their self-efficacy. Yeah, and so Kalel Talapis Foundation have been doing all of this work um, so far. And sometimes I do um, know that there are people who have concerns with some of the things that are happening. And sometimes I, I just want to say, you know, if you see things that's not going in the country as you would want to, there are, there are means that you can connect with other people to, to sponsor or to fund yeah. um, uh, some of those things so that they can work. Because oftentimes when we see it happening in, in the countries we are from, we've been in or live in, um, that's how it's done, isn't it? People yeah. see the need and they, they sponsor or fund it or find means of raising That's money for it. Point. So you might not have the time to be able to do it, but you'll have the network and the facility to do it. Yes. So you get someone who will have the time mm -hmm. and they're on the ground to see the actual issue at hand. Yeah. And then you come together and see how you can come to a, a ground of agreement in terms of how to like pivot from there yeah because one of the things i find yeah. that is key to, to me at the moment and from a lot of the comments we've had is something to do with the medical care and they look at the emergency and i'm thinking well the emergency is an issue okay so how could we fund a better ambulance service for example like the ambulance service in the uk a lot of yeah. charity raises money towards it to make it the vibrant effective timely and efficient service that it is and so if we wanted to see a similar thing here then maybe we should be able to figure out a way of seeing how we can contribute to funding it so it was I'm, I'm pleased to you know see how you see that you see a need and how you can bridge that need through your charity and encouraging other charities to do the same yes because um, whilst we can always blame the government for having the being responsible to do this and that if we come together as, as civilians of the community, we can strengthen the community. Definitely. Because the government is not living in our community. We're the ones that's living in it and we see what we need. Mm -hmm. So we could either come together collectively and do that, or we can petition to them, or do our part and then show them what we can actually do and what we're capable of doing with the resources that we have. Yeah. And then petition to them to see how they could add on to that vision to make it more long term. Definitely. Give it more longevity and then more sustenance going forward. Yeah. And a, and a lot of companies will probably come on board and, you know, like match match the funds and stuff but because there's so much to do you know they want to see things getting done and sometimes as citizens we are also the government um we are we they're just the elected body 
is but we on a, on a whole are and as you said the civilians people living in the community we see those need and it's impacting us as well so we we fund into it to yeah, try and, and get I, it I to work that we, we are all um, able to impact change and to leave a ripple effect on someone no matter how small or how big it is yeah it could simply be smiling to your neighbor and saying hello yes or it could be on a, on a more grand scale where you could find a child i started there too before i even started the charity i just found one child um from i was a child and i sponsored that child yeah through school and then that report effected into something else and that changed that child's um, whole life in terms of the experience that they had as a child mm -hmm. um, and their childhood that they experienced and reframe their future so they can now be able to keep going on doing that report effect. I, I agree and it's something that probably we'll need to look into a little bit more so some of the things that we know that these are concerns that's keeping so many Jamaicans in the diaspora from coming home we need to probably look at you know how could we effect a change by creating a means of funding and supporting those things so that they so that they feel that they can be safe when they come home and they can get the necessary care they want and the emergency can work effectively as well as some of the other things that um probably doesn't get as much notice i i, I do agree um that will take structures so we I, I think we could do go back to the days where we had little community meetings mm -hmm. so in each division we could probably have a few people that are elected from the community because it's people who are in the community who know them and their skill sets and their credibility yeah um, and their integrity and um have those people be the voice of the communities mm -hmm. have those um, bodies and forums and then they themselves can now represent the people in the community to the bigger um, governmental bodies and that would help to make sure that everyone can heard. Do frequent surveys with regards to um, any change that's going to be petitioned or in, in, well, anything that's going to change in the numbers that's going to impact other people around in the community so that they can have their voice and give back. And then we can then be able to come to a decision that's going to benefit everyone collectively. Yeah, and you, and I, I also think that if you see something that is a problem, um, and it's such a big alarming problem to you, then that means that you the the creator of the universe has given you that thing without you've been assigned the responsibility to I fix agree. that problem, and therefore you should take it on board to fix it. I you totally know? agree. There are some things that you're going to be nudged to do, but mm -hmm. you're not going to feel that you have the capacity because, for example, to go and fix a hole in the road if it's on a big main road, you're going to have to close down a side of traffic. That's probably going to be a bit much and you need to then have other people in, in interjecting into it and, mm -hmm. and for health and safety reason yeah but if it's just a little pothole in the community you can yeah. all get together and do that before it turns into a cascading hole exactly that's my perception anyways but um at the end of the day th there are a vast amount of people who think that that responsibility lies on the people that they've already allocated it for because they don't want to have to deal with that mm -hmm. and then there are others who just think this is going to be an inconvenience for my life and create more inconvenience and they just get on with it. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it depends too on their mental, mental, mental health and their capacities that they do have, um, and resources. I, and how I, resourceful they are. I do. I do yeah. agree. I do agree. But I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, the sun is sunning. <laughs> I know it is, even although it's this hour of the day. But I do appreciate you um, yeah. talking to us about some of the things that you do and get involved in. Because I know that you do come on holiday and when you holiday, you holiday. But at the same point in time, you're also making room within that holiday time to work and to get the kids involved in a lot of things. I, I do like to target the children because I, I do empathize with the older generation. But I think that it is better to impact the children because they're going to be our tomorrow. I totally couldn't agree more yeah. because that's where our future lies. Exactly. Yeah. If, if the households are more close-knitted, the communities will realign back to being close-knitted and then we'll have a more close-knitted country. Yeah. Because each person can then be accountable for each other rather than having that holistic segregation that now exists where it's more each person for themselves. Yeah, which which only Chris decays and, and destroys community, definitely. Yeah. And the dysfunction is definitely one of the things yeah. that does happen. So that's, that's really um, a refreshing opportunity because I think we have that similar idea, ideation about um, making sure that we hone in on the young people. And, and as you say, it's not that we are ignoring the old people. We respect what they've done and we want to treasure and ensure that they get, they, they get the privilege to live out the rest of their life in a grand style with respect and honor and dignity. And dignity. But we now need to make sure that the young people who are rising up to take these mantle for the future have the skills that they need and are being pushed as much as possible to be able to do better, exceedingly exactly. better Amen. than than the people ahead of us and even than we did. So that you know, we that's how we grow our nation in the I, long run. I think run. so too, and I think the best and the most effective leadership transcends 
you always want to pass the button on, especially if it's gifting. Yeah. Because you want to then mentor someone else to take over because God is a generational thinker. And we are in his image, so we also should be generational thinkers. Exactly, definitely. It was awesome chatting. Thank you so much. And we're going to go back to our children and enjoy the time that they're having. (laughs) I do appreciate. So it's what it is. Thank you. Well, for having you for that having chat me. it's a pleasure and i appreciate it you're most welcome All the best. like share subscribe most certainly Hit the notification bell so that once the video is uploaded then you can get the response very quickly Toodles, bye bye the primary concern is um with that i get from the diaspora is about the medical care especially the emergency care and one of the ways in which that can be fixed is by um, setting up a fund um, or, or a foundation, a Jamaican diaspora and fund that will then see to it that we have skilled people who are trained and an ambulance service in order to be able to ad, um, address those emergency calls and in so doing reduce fatality. That could be as a result of um, ambulance crews not getting to the place that they need to be on time. And so I wanted to showcase this because the idea has been going through my mind and I thought okay well I'm going to share this on the platform and then see how people feel about it I am very mindful that lots of people in the diaspora already have burdens that they are trying to fix and support in ways in um, um, through different means in the country however I wanted to share that with you how beneficial would it be to have an independent um, ambulance service in the same way that the UK does for example the way in which my brain works is once I see a problem I start to process for solutions and so when I saw so many people highlighting this as a concern of theirs I started to think well what could some of the solutions be and in the same way in which um, alumni groups see issues that are happening in their schools that they've attended and seek out how they can fund those and help to resolve it it's a similar way with 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 the crisis of any form or any concerns or situation that we see in the country and so hence my reason for thinking in the same way alumni or um, groups see concerns in the schools that they have attended and want to figure out solutions to fix them in the same way the Jamaicans in the diaspora who sees concerns um, of this nature and it, it's such a great concern weighing heavily on them um, maybe it's also a way in which we can look at how we can solve it and and work together as a diaspora so that um, we are not put off from returning because of those concerns but we can address those concerns so it enables us to be able to do that great thing that we want to do which is to return but because of the concern with emergency care emergency medical care that is keeping us from returning if we pull together all pull together and work in a way that is going to benefit the country um, then maybe that will increase the, the chance of people deciding that this is something they want to do if, if that's the case, and you think that an um, emergency, um, uh, uh, an ambulance service would be a good thing for a Jamaican diaspora fund to work on, then do let me know in the comments down below. Um, I would really appreciate hearing what you think for this solution, for that concern that so many Jamaican diasporans have. What's happening? I am making waffles. Okay. Um, what, what does that entail? In the car, cast iron. Okay. So, what does that entail, it's ladies? A secret, it's a secret recipe. I okay. Can't say. Kasia. This is what we need. To wow. That's a lot. <laughs> and somebody stole one. Oh. <laughs> that is one thousand Jamaican dollars. Yep. All that smelling, she was smelling it. She was prepared to steal one. Ah. Uh, Oh, are you gonna cry? I doubt it. But you still have a lot more left. Oh, no, can't pacify it. What's left? Oh, she had time. Our time, I should have pan. She's timing the other one, the last one. This is mine, then. That's okay. It looks nice, and it's your first experiment of it. Does it taste nice? Is that flour? They do make it with flour. It's their first time making it. So. It's crunchy. It looks like waffle. Mm-hmm. It is a waffle, mommy. Does it not taste like waffle? It looks like waffle. It's not sweet. It tastes healthier than waffle. Okay. That's good because you don't like the healthy things. 
Ah, so you hit the jackpot there, right there then. Okay, so what we're having waffles with then? There's mine. So, um, did you want to tell us what, or is it still a secret recipe that you're not going to share? I just wanted to know how many did you get from the butter you made? Six. Okay, so that's good. Because you thought you would get four. So it's a good thing you split. Five. Okay. This you is got... mine and this is mine. Okay. So I need to know from you guys how you think it went. It was yeah. good, but I'm going to make it similar to how I have custards. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And well, how is that? Oh, you're going to put chocolate spread on it? Okay. And since it tastes healthy, it won't matter. <laughs> since it tastes healthy, it won't matter with chocolate spread. Is it? Uh huh. Well, I'm going to leave you to you two to enjoy yourselves. Who's going to wash up? <laughs> Good question. We're going to one has to wash one. Well, they've got it all sauced. So you're giving me one. Well, I need it all nicely done, like you said you were. You're going to do yours. I need the experience too. What are you going to put on yours, Kasia? You're going to put chocolate spread on yours. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I don't want a lot on mine though. This reminds me of the waffles we bought in the UK with the chocolate in each one. Oh. She's doing a smiley face. Where's the smiley face? Was it smiley face you're doing? It's a swoop. Oh, just a swoop. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Is that mine? Thank you. Okay then. Thanks for sharing. Hmm. Is this the first one you guys made? Second. Is this the okay. Hmm. Yeah. I like the fact that it's not sweet, so when you put this on it, mm -hmm. it doesn't make it um, overwhelmingly sweet. And thanks for sharing it. So how did Auntie Kamika think it tastes? She said it was nice. It was okay. okay. It was healthy and delicious. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. So, the waffle tasted nice. Um, it's not too sweet. It tasted very healthy. It tasted a bit doughy. You, only the texture is different because we're used to it having those sugar mm -hmm. roughage. And more fluffy, so I think more it probably needed a little bit more milk in the bottle. I think it was fine. Otherwise, and it turned out looking like waffles. I would actually eat it again without the chocolate spread. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I want to thank you for staying with us here on this another episode of Life with the Jam Fam. And bye for now. We will see you in the next one.